Hello viewers, in this video I will talk about a poem and the title of the poem is Kubla Khan and it is written by Samuel Taylor Coleridge who was a, an English romantic poet. So without further delay, let's begin our discussion. Kubla Khan, uh, it was completed in 1797 and originally published in 1816. And it is also sometimes given the subtitle as a vision in a dream and a fragment. Okay. And according to Coleridge's preface to Kubla Khan, this poem was composed one night after he had experienced an opium influence dream after reading a work describing Shangdu. Okay. Shangdu was the summer capital of the Mongol led Yuan dynasty of China, which was founded by Kublai Khan. Uh, who was an emperor, Shiju of Yuan. And upon waking up, he set up about writing lines of poetry that came to him from the dream until he was interrupted by a person from Porlok. Okay. Besides, this poem could not be completed according to its original 200 to 300 line plan as the interruption caused him to forget the lines. Later, consequently, he left it unpublished and kept it for private readings for his friends until 1816 when, at the prompting of Lord Byron, it was eventually published. So, it was a brief background of this poem. I hope you have understood. Now, let's proceed to the summary of this poem. But I would like to request, please read the original poem please read the poem line by line please have your own opinion and gather facts information from different sources and uh, listen to your professors your teachers your guidance your mentors thank you so much now let's go to the summary section the uh, first stanza of the poem it begins with the poet imagining kubla khan in the city of zandao zandao is in china at that time and it was the summer capital of uh, Kublai Khan and he sits there while commanding from his lavish palace doom and a huge river of elf uh, was also flowing through the enormous chambers and mixing into the sea uh, besides tall towers and walls it had protected the capital that had stunning gardens with a streamlet and aromatic plants furthermore uh, the second stanza, it also takes us through a deeper imagination describing how divine creativity can be seen in Zandao and the sloping hill having green plants which also has a rift and the mosses are covering them. So this kind of thing we will get if we read the line. And uh, the speaker of the poem or the poet Samuel Taylor Coleridge, he has compared it to the wild and natural love of a woman crying in the memory of her demonic lover. Uh, however, this rift has an endless commotion as if the art is breeding furiously though through it. Moreover, there is also a holy river which flows through the woods as well as the valley in a zigzag manner. And the next stanza, it also now combines human creativity and divine creative creativity. Does it results in artifacts? Then Kubla Khan, uh, the poet is saying that can he, he can hear the voices of his deceased ancestors foretelling about the future war, about the imminent future war. Uh, Nevertheless, the poem also depicts the shadow of the luxurious palace doom floating in the air. Then the poet also uh, portrays it as a miracle because of the sunny location and ice cave coexistence. Then eventually the last stanza tells us about a dream the poet has and he sees a damsel playing a musical instrument and she is a black girl probably belonging to Ethiopia and while playing her instrument she is also singing for Mount Abura and this impresses the poet as he say, says that he is not capable of reviving her symphony uh, and sound in him and this is rare as he considers her superior which was uncommon back then and he also hopes that he could have the same symphony as the girl so as to build the doom like pleasure doom does this would make him more attractive and appealing to the audience then he also wishes that it would also result in the audience appreciating his poetry and praising him does 
they will also be able to imagine things deeply as it does thereby it would also achieve paradise by building the doom and having the symphony then uh, the kubla khan uh, the king the emperor he also begins by announcing that it is a uh, uh, he has built this for pleasure and he has also proposed to describe the mongol leader the poet has also proposed to describe the mongol leader's summer palace along with all its luxurious and for the speakers exotic pleasure however the poem all soon takes a curious turn instead of describing sumptuous decorations or brilliant jewels it has also focused mainly on the river that runs through the grounds of the palace what's more instead of describing that river in pleasant terms it often focuses on the river's violent energy besides through these descriptions kubla khan the poem suggests that pleasure and beauty are neither simple nor uncomplicated rather the poem shows that pleasure and beauty come from the conflict between opposing forces and that they always contain some degree of violence and ugliness uh be, and then the the ground of kubla khan's pleasure doom are not quite as pleasant uh, as one might expect as pleasant sorry true they and, and no doubt that it en encompasses twice five miles of fertile ground and gardens bright with sinuous rills but the speaker also moves quickly beyond this pleasant pleasant palaces places devoting only six rather formulaic lines to describing them instead the focus of the poem and the speaker's energy it also lies in the poem's middle stanza where the speaker describes what happens to those who sinuous rills or small streams when they exit the play pleasant gardens then they become a violent river which has cut a uh, deep gorge into the earth and its geyser throw up massive boulders then the speaker also described this place in unsettling terms that it is a savage place as holy and enchanted okay so that's it